Hey guys, welcome back. So there's currently 2.9 million applications available on the full Google Play Store. But as we know on the Nvidia Shield or any of the official Android TV boxes, we only have a small fraction of applications available to us. And of course on the Amazon devices, there's no Google Play Store at all. So wouldn't it just be amazing if we could access the entire, and I really do mean entire Google Play Store on all of our devices. Well, guess what guys, that's exactly what this video is. So in this video today, let me show you how you can install a single application, which will give you access to the entire, and I really do mean entire Google Play Store on all of your devices. You could also log in as your official Google account, or you can also use anonymous login. So if for whatever reason, you don't want to use your own credentials, you can also log in with anonymous credentials and still access all of the applications. So with all of that being said, let's get started if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials the latest fire stick android and android tv tips and tricks then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it's a small click from you but it makes a big difference to me thank you okay so to get direct access to the entire google play store we're going to install a single application now this application was updated in the last few days and they put some good fixes in there one of the issues that people had is they weren't able to log in using their google account but that's now been fixed and there's some other sort of bug fixes and tweaks under the hood now to get this application we're going to use downloader again now I've noticed in my last few videos where I've recommended that people use Downloader, some of you still don't have that fix which doesn't allow you to download from Downloader. And when you do try and download from Downloader, you get the error message saying that downloading is not supported. Now that really does have a very easy fix and if you look in the pinned comment, I will leave a link to the video in there. It's only like a 2-3 minute video but I'll show you exactly how you can fix Downloader to download this. And this is only if you're doing this on the Nvidia Shield, if you're doing this on a Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube, you can just use Downloader as per normal. So once again, let's now navigate to my website, which is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, I did actually recommend that you guys add my website as a as a favorite. So the next time you want to uh, come back in, you can just go straight to your favorites and access my site. But in case some of you didn't watch my video yesterday, I mean, what's wrong with you? Um, this is the, the address we want to go to. So bit.ly forward slash tduk, that's me, and the number is 2019. Let's type that in and let's click on go. And once again, if you want to add this as a favorite, if you just press and hold the select button, and on the fire stick, you press the context key, and you want to select this option here, which is add the current page to your favorites. Once you've done that, let's scroll down, and let's click on the hamburger menu, and click on downloads. And if you scroll down, you will find there is a dedicated link for the Aurora Play Store. And just to confirm again, this was updated in the last few days. So if you have installed this before from a previous video or from elsewhere, definitely uninstall it and get the latest version from me. So let's click on that. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. And let's click on install. Okay, let's click on done. Let's press the home key. And we can click on the plus here. And we can now add this in onto our home screen. Let's open that up. Here we can just see the change log with the latest version. So they fixed some of the login issues, some of the splash screen issues. Some people were getting errors regarding uh, no network issue or no network found, but that's all now being resolved. Now one key thing here guys is this application, although you can use it with the standard remote control, some of the things I do find are a bit easier with a, a virtual mouse or with an air mouse. So I'm gonna use my old air mouse and keyboard. So let's click on next. Let's get permissions. And for now, let's click on anonymous login. But guys, I have tested logging on with my own Google credentials and that works absolutely fine. So you can log in if you want to. Let's say for example, you've purchased an application. Well, as long as you log into this application using the same uh, Play Store account, then you'll be able to download the application once again without paying any extra charges. Now, in case you're wondering, why would anybody want to download applications directly from the Google Play Store? Well, I'd say probably the first one is just integrity because you know these applications are coming directly from the Google Play server. So in terms of like, you know, are the applications safe? Have they been scanned? All of that stuff is guaranteed because for those applications to get onto the Google Play Store, then they've already been through those checks and processes. On top of that, in terms of getting updates, because these updates are gonna be coming directly from the Google Play Store, then 
you'll be able to get the updates also very quickly. And of course, in things like performance, because again, these are coming directly from Google, you'll be able to download updates or these applications very, very quickly. So they're probably the three main reasons I can think of on why you'd wanna download applications directly from the Google Play Store. And here it is, guys, we now have full access to the entire Google Play Store. Now, one of the key things about this application is, is you will be able to also spoof your device type. Now, what happens is when an application makes a connection to the Google Play Store, based on your device ID, it then gives you certain applications. So right now it knows that I'm a Nvidia Shield Pro and based on that device, it's showing me these applications because they're the only applications available for my device. And let's say I wanna download something, so let's click on this here. Uh, so this application is already installed on my device, but here I can click on update and get the update directly from Google. So that's the first benefit of using this application. Let's see if the update works. That's now downloaded. That should now install OK. Let's go back again. Let's try a new application. So let's say I want to install uh, this thing here. Let's click on install. Give that a second. Let's click on install. And that's now installed OK. So we can see very, very easy to install applications directly from the Google Play Store. And the other key benefit about this application is we have the ability to spoof our device. So uh, let's say, for example, I want to install a game. So there's a great game called uh, Crazy Taxi. Uh, which is available on the official uh, Google Play Store. But we can see here, guys, if I search for crazy, let's just search for crazy, and here we can just see it cannot find it, guys, because again, the Google Play servers know that we are an NVIDIA Shield, and based on that device ID, it thinks that Crazy Taxi is not available or it's not supported on that device. So how can we fix that? Well, as I mentioned, guys, one of the great things about this application is we have the ability to spoof our device type. So click on the hamburger menu, and we can go to spoof. And here we can see it knows that right now my device is a Shield Android TV, and we have the option here to spoof a device. So if I click on this thing here, I now get a big list of devices that I can basically spoof or pretend to be when I'm talking to the Google Play servers. So let's say for example, if I pretend to be a, a Google Pixel 2, let's click on that. Okay, so it's now just showing you some of the device info of our sort of wannabe or our fake device. Let's click on apply. It says this change will be applied after you re-log in. So let's click on log out. Okay, let's log back in as anonymous. Let's see if that works first time. And you can just see straight away, guys, we now see a lot more applications that wouldn't typically be available for the Android TV operating system. So I uh, can see things like WhatsApp or you know eBay or Instagram. Let's now do the real test. So if I go back to search, and let's say I'm actually searching for crazy. And there it is, guys. We can now see Crazy Taxi in the list. I can click on that. I can click on the first one here, the official one and click on install. So even though this application was not available for the Android TV operating system, and it'll be exactly the same for your Fire TV Cube or the 4K Fire Stick, we can use the Aurora Play Store and access all of this great content. Let's see if that works. And just while you're waiting for that, guys, if you are enjoying this kind of content, if you want to see more tutorials for the Nvidia Shield or the Fire TV Cube or the 4K Fire Stick or even your typical Android TV boxes, then please do take a minute to hit that like button and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. And here we can just see guys, so even though this game was nearly 300 meg in size, there's actually come down pretty much in a few seconds. Let's click on install. Let's see if that works. After this, I'll show you some of the other options you can do to tweak this application. Okay, that's now over there. Let's see if I click on open. Is that gonna work first time? All right, let's choose Axel. And here we are playing Crazy Taxi, which wasn't available for our device, but we can see that's working absolutely fine. I mean, to be fair, it is a shame that we have to go through all of these hoops just to get these applications from the Google Play Store, just because, you know, Google or Android TV think these are not suitable for our device. But as we can see here, guys, the game is working absolutely fine with no issues, no problems, um, and that's just working great. And just uh, looking at my, whoops, looking at my driving, maybe TD UK should have been a, an Uber driver. <laughs> okay, so the application itself has a fairly basic uh, interface. On the top left here, we've got the uh, hamburger menu. Let's click on that. Here you can see your currently installed My Applications and Games. Let's click on that. 
As previously mentioned, guys, you can actually update all of these applications directly from the Aurora Play Store. So if there is an application that has an update on the Google Play Store, you can get the update from here. Let's try Aerial Dream. And we can see this one does have an update. So if I did want to update that, I can just click on update. And we can see that's now updated the application directly from the Aurora Play Store. Okay, let's back out of that. Here you can mark your favorite applications for easy access. And you can also blacklist applications if you don't want to see them anymore for whatever reason. Let's go into settings. In the installations menu, you can specify things like what happens once your application is finished downloading. Does it automatically install it or does it prompt you? And in the updates menu, you can basically check for updates for the Aurora store itself. You can also specify when they should go out and check for updates for your already installed application. So whether that's done on an hourly basis or weekly or daily, just to see if there are any new versions of the applications you've already got installed. On the bottom here, you've got the uh, updates. This will show you all of the applications that you have installed on your device, which require updates or that there's updates for. So here, for example, we can see this uh, ITV hub has an update. I can click on that and select the option to update. Let's back out of that. Then lastly, we have categories here. So if you do want to go through the entire Play Store, but filter it through different categories, we can now do that. We can pretty much access all these applications. Whereas if you search for these applications using the normal Play Store, you just wouldn't see them on your device. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for staying till the end. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.